My guest today is Claire Dyer. Her poetry collections are published by Two River Press, her novels by Kirkus and the Dome Press. Her latest novel, The Significant Others of Odie May, is published by Matador, and she has a new collection forthcoming with Two Rivers Press in 2024. She has curated Reading Poets Cafe for the past five years, teaches creative writing and runs Fresh Eyes, an editorial and critiquing service. She has an MA in creative writing from Royal Holloway, University of London, and is a regular contributor on BBC Radio Berkshire. So welcome to the show, Claire. How lovely to see you here. Lovely to see you. Thank you so much for having me. So we're really here to discuss um, your poetry collection, which is a beautiful journey, really, a mother's journey through poetry, I guess you could say, about your son becoming your daughter. Yes, um, and it took, um, I think it took five years to uh, you know, get the poems on paper and then get them in the right order and then get it published. But the um, publisher was very supportive all the way through. So um, it, it was an absolutely um, revelatory experience. And my now daughter, she read the book in draft before I submitted the final version to make sure she was happy with everything. And um, thankfully she was, so we were able to go ahead. Um, and I would just say that I do have her permission to refer to her by her old name, status and gender whenever appropriate. Yeah, that, that's really useful to check. Um, yeah. We were having a little chat before and I am an auntie to a trans niece and a trans nephew. And I still I have a real fear and panic that I'm, I'm going to get it wrong and I'm going to call them, call them by the wrong name and the wrong gender. And it's really yeah, something I'm very aware of. So. When did all of this start for you and Lucy? Um, well, it started uh, when um, she was in sixth form and she sort of came came along to me and said, I, you know, I'm having a few debates with myself about all sorts of things. So, so sixth in. form, you're about 16, 17, is that right? Yes, yeah, it was in the, it was in the upper six, so she was about 17. Um, and he didn't really um, manifest in, in any way other than a sort of general unsettled, unsettledness for a few years. And um, then she went off to university and it was there where she joined the LGBTQ um, society, became quite um, act active in it and, and a, you know, a, a role of, of advisor and um, and, and helping them put on events, etc. And it was when she was 21 that we were on holiday and uh, she said, I've got a family announcement. And uh, we were there with my husband, my son, his wife to be, and Lucy. And she was Liam at the time. And she said, I think I'm trans. Um, and then <laughs> she said, and so can we go shopping now, please, for clothes? And I was like, oh, I can't do it yet. And my nephew came out as transgender um I said but well, you haven't changed you're still you on the inside you know you just outwardly maybe you look a bit different and you've got a bit yeah. more facial hair than you had before but you're, you're still the same person to me I love you who whoever you are mm. so yeah to me love is love um but we know there's a there's huge arguments whereas you avoided it, it's the best thing to do biologically and and gender but I've seen the difference it's made when they've come out because beforehand there were mental health issues, self-harming, you know, just not happy to be yeah. who they were. And, and they told me that they've known since they were four or five that they were in the oh, wrong body. Really? They knew from a young, young age. Yeah. But there does seem to be now, I guess, like an explosion of trans, uh, whether that's it's safe for now for people to come out and there's always been trans people. What, what do you think about that? I, I, yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think there always has been. Um, I think um, I, I feel for those of, of previous generations who weren't able to express themselves and have the relationships that they really wanted. I mean, one thing that um, Liam said to me early on was I don't want to get to being, you know, in, in middle age, be married, have a family and then go through this you know I want to do it now so I set off on the right path um, but I know that there are others out there who, who have left it later in life um, or haven't been able to you know do it at all and um, the 
experiences I've had of other people's reactions have been so heartwarming and inclusive. One, one friend I was quite nervous about telling, you know, I brought, invited around coffee, you know, and sat down and said, oh, I'm to get you. Um, and she, um, she said, actually, I think that was harder for you to say than it was for me to hear, yeah. which I thought was such a wise and kind thing to say. And isn't that often the way that the fear is always bigger than actually when we actually do it, you think, oh, it wasn't so bad, yeah. especially, obviously, if you're met with a, a good reaction. But how, I guess, how has been the reaction, you know, with your, your husband and um, Lucy's brother, how did they cope with the um, My husband's been absolutely fine with it from day one. Um, I think he's very much, you know, I'm, I'm here to be, to support my child. Um, and it's we, we've had some quite interesting discussions about the difference between mothers and fathers in, in that regard, because I think you know my connection is close is closer um, physically, you know, genetically and, and just having born born the baby, you know, there's a, that there's something viable there that, that will never change. You never forget the moment that the baby comes out and um, you, you see them for the first time. And um, I just remember seeing him and thinking, Oh yes, it's you. Um, I, I've been waiting for you. Yeah, my mum kind of said that she felt a grief for the two grandchildren that she felt she'd lost. Yeah. And then she felt there were suddenly four children in that family. Then the other two have kind of disappeared, and now she's got two. The two, the two yeah. trans. Yes, it, uh, it, it is. It is a kind of grief, and I think acknowledging that is important. Um, you you have to go. You have to let yourself go through the stages of loss and gain. Yes, because she had this granddaughter and grandson for all these years, and then yeah. they were appeared on the outside to be different, but they're not really. No, no. And as you said, so much happier. Yes. You know, when your yes. son I mean, overheard you know, it, these young still, people, so much happier. That you know, there are still battles to be to, to be fought, but there are in in any growing up. I think at the beginning, I really believed I wasn't going to be able to write about it at all. You know, this was a sort of off limits topic. It was something I couldn't even articulate. And I actually, but then I wrote one poem, which actually is now the penultimate one in the book, mm -hmm. um, which was very different at the time. It was full of quite, quite a lot of anger. And then over the time, it sort of morphed into a poem of, of love. And um, then I realised that was the sort of point I wanted to get to. And so then, as as I was going through these these years of this of this change, um, the poem. Fortunately, the poems came. So. And uh, then, I, you know, I, I was lucky in that I had a sort of chronological order to follow, but also around the three yield poems, which... Form, yes, I was going know, to ask you, because yield has three separate meanings. Can you speak more about that and why you yes. chose to call it yield? Well, I, I, um, people ask me, so where do you get the, the, the idea from? And I really, really don't know, but it hmm. just seemed to arrive. And thankfully, it, it was just perfect because the first meaning is to to give forth by a natural process and so to me that was you know having the baby yeah. and then yield is to give in or surrender there's another meaning and so that was sort of the, the middle stage of the book where i'm i'm getting used to the idea of this of this monumental change in in our family makeup and then the third and final um definition is um gay you know to uh, have, have, have something, a result of something, you know, gain. And I do feel as though we have gained from this process. The book is based sort of five years ago when it was, as you say, raw and new. And yeah, you were in a different up. space, I would imagine. Yeah, it, it is. Um, it's sometimes I sort of have to remind myself that she was once Liam. Yeah. But that's really refreshing, I think, maybe for anybody listening right now, is that you are five years down the road and, and Lucy is Lucy. And actually, you've only really met support and love and mm -hmm. understanding. And yeah. it's really great to hear, you know, if I guess anyone is listening and their child is transitioning or they've just come out as trans or someone that's trans is thinking about coming out. What advice would you give someone that's listening in right now? Talk. Talk to each other. Um, you know, let 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 each other know how you're feeling. Be honest, because it's 
it's so so freighted. Um, I mean, there was a time when she came home for a weekend from university, and I wasn't able to wash her laundry. I couldn't put her clothes in with mine because I've been so used to you know washing <laughs> boy boy things. Um, and you know, some things were said that possibly shouldn't have been said, but. When she left, I packed her a little hamper of food to take home with her back to where she was living. And um, she emailed afterwards and said, you know, sorry, it didn't go brilliantly this weekend, but, um, you know, th thanks for the ham. It was delicious. And so then I knew, I kind of knew we'd be okay. 